Hello everyone, this is Keith from the Solo Gamers Club and welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to be continuing with our playthrough of War of the Ring using Shadowbot 3.3. This is episode 4. We've reclaimed our dice, now with Aragorn back in the mix we've got a total of 5 action dice for the Free Peoples. They've drawn the cards The Power of Tom Bombadil, Bilbo's Song, and By Chance or by foresight. Shadow player also drew his cards. He has one too many in the faction event deck, so he discarded a random card. Fellowship is currently in Eastern Emden Mule. They have one progress and four corruption. The guide is Meriadoc Brandybuck. Shadow player has placed one eye into the pool and no additional eyes were rolled during our action roll. Shadow, uh, Free People's Player has a full complement of cards, six standard events and four faction, and we've rolled two character die, two event, muster army, recruit faction, and a muster die. Shadow Player also has a full complement of cards, and they've rolled an army die, a recruit or play faction card, character die, draw a card, die, two muster die, two muster army, and two event dice. Free Peoples will begin by using a event die, and we're going to play We Prove the Swifter. Separate from the fellowship or move one companion or one group of companions. You may move them two extra regions. The movement of these companions is allowed to end in a stronghold under siege. All right, so we're going to use that We Prove the Swifter with an event die, and we're going to take Meriadoc out of the Fellowship. And he's going to move since the card allows him to. He has a total movement of one for his normal, one for the Fellowship track, and he gets two extra for the card. This is a total of four provinces or regions. So we're going to have him move. Um, and he's going to move four, so it'll be one, well, three. One, two, and three into Minas Tirith, which is under siege. So we've got Boromir, Aragorn, and Merry now in Minas Tirith. There are no more companions left in the fellowship, so that means Gollum is going to appear. And Gollum becomes the guide, and his special ability is, it says, as soon as there are no companions in the fellowship, immediately add Gollum to the fellowship. Gollum becomes the guide of the fellowship. And his guide action is standard number of standard number hunt tiles with a reveal icon do not reveal the fellowship. If the fellowship is not revealed as an effect of the hunt, you may choose to reveal it to reduce the hunt damage by one to a minimum of zero. All right. All right, the shadow player is up next. He is going to be focused on military matters in the Umbar and Harad region. And I think... The Southrons are going to use an army die, and they're going to move some armies. We'll move these forces that are in Umbar into Harondor. For a second, <coughs> excuse me, second movement, we're going to move the forces in Far Harad into Near Harad. All right. Free Peoples are up next, and we're going to use the char uh, character card, Bilbo's Song. We'll use an event die to play that. And that says, heal one corruption point. If Gollum is the guide, heal two corruption points instead, and that's what we're going to do. And that's going to move our corruption down from four down to two, which is pretty good. Shadow Player is up next. He's focused on military matters, and he is focusing on Isengard. Saruman is going to play Armed by Saruman, and we're going to use a Recruit Play Faction card. And that reads, play on the table if Isengard is at war. When this card is in play, Dunlending figures in regions with the Fellowship are considered Shadow Army units for the purposes of the hunt. Dunlending figures in the same region with a shadow army, add to its combat strength 
when one of their call to battle effects is used and can be taken as casualties against Ent attacks. The Free People's player may force Armed by Saruman to be discarded by using a Will of the West Eye. Okay. The Fellowship is going to use a character die and we're going to advance the Fellowship that's going to move us to two on the Fellowship track. That'll be sufficient for us to reach Mar the Gates of Moranin, the Black Gate. Now we'll have to do a hunt roll. There is one eye in the box and they're going to get, well, it would be two rerolls. And here's the Shadow's Hunt roll. Rolls a two. He's going to get one reroll. And he fails. So we place the character die in the hunt box. That'll modify any future movements. And that will complete that action die. Shadow player is focused on his hunt for the ring. We don't have any cards that we can play that will directly attack the fellowship. So I think we're going to use one of our event dice and we're going to draw a character card that'll put the shadow player over his hand limit so we're going to randomly discard one of the other character events that we uh, couldn't use free peoples is up next and we're going to use our muster die to do some recruiting and i think we're going to recruit an elite in peliger so we'll place an elite in peliger Shadow player is up next and he's focusing on the hunt for the ring. He's going to play a character card, Candles of Corpses. We'll use a character event die. Play if the fellowship is not in a region containing a free people settlement. Roll three dice and add one corruption point for each result of four plus. If Gollum is the guide, add one corruption point on each result of six instead. All right, well, we'll try it. So we're looking for sixes for the shadow player. And he has no success. Free People's player is up next, and I think we're going to use a muster army die to play King Brand's men. Recruit two North regular units in Dale, then draw one strategy event. Okay. So we'll place two North regulars in Dale, and we're going to draw a strategy event. And we draw the card, Thranduil's Archers. Okay. Shadow player is up next, and he is focused on military matters, and he's in the Harad and Umbar region. And we're going to use a Muster Army die. And we're going to activate the forces in West Horondor to attack Pelagur. All right, we've set up the forces on the battle board. The Free Peoples have a combat strength of 3. Shadow Player has a combat strength of 5. Now they're attacking into a city, so during the first round only 6s are going to count. Each side has played a combat card. Free Peoples have played Valor. Play if a Free Peoples Elite is in the battle, and they have an Elite. And that says add 1 to all dice on your combat roll. Shadow Player has played Desperate Battle. Both armies add one to all dice on their combat roll and leader reroll. Incidentally, neither team has any leadership. We'll begin with the Shadow Player attack. He has a combat strength of five, and he'll be adding one to the dice for his desperate roll. He needs sixes. And he ends up with only one hit. All right. The Free Peoples are going to be adding one for the Desperate Battle and one for their Valor card. So they'll be getting plus two. And they'll hit on fives and sixes. And they have a total of two hits. All right. There's no rerolls. So we're going to take casualties. The Shadow Player is going to have to lose two units and he'll lose two regulars. Those go back into his force pool, and the Free Peoples are going to lose one, and I think we'll downgrade the Elite down to a regular, and that'll keep our battle strength at three. That Elite unit goes into the discard pile. 
So now the advantage of being in the city is removed and the combat cards are removed. And we can decide if we're going to run a, another round. And the shadow player is going to continue the attack. We have to decide if we want to stay or retreat. Well, without the city advantage, it's probably in our best interests to retreat. So I think the Gondorian forces are going to withdraw. And I think the Gondor units are going to go in, they'll retreat into Lossernik. That'll kind of split the force and that'll kind of force the shadow player to either go for Dal Amroth or to continue the assault with Minas Tirith. So we'll place these units in West Rondor and they can advance now since that city's been vacated. And I think they will place all their forces into Polygar. All right. Free People's players up next. I think they're going to use this recruit die and we're going to recruit an Ent in Fangorn Forest. We'll place another Ent in Fangorn and I'm sure Sauron isn't happy about that. Shadow players up next. He has turned his focus to military matters in the Moria Dal Galdur region. And I think they are going to use a muster army die to activate the second army and assault the fortress in Lorien. We'll set that up in the battle board. All right. Free peoples have a combat strength of five. Galadriel is leading. They have a leadership of two for her, one for the elven leader. And we have eagles. And they are going to play the card, Speeding on a Gathering Wind. Play if there are one or more eagle figures within a distance of four regions from the defending army. Move any or all of these eagle figures to the region containing the defending army. After removing casualties from the combat roll and the leader reroll, you may roll up to one die for each of these, up to five. For each result of one, eliminate one eagle for each result of six. Score a hit. A shadow army under siege is not affected. All right. So they're going to bring in another eagle from Eagle's Eyrie. And I think they'll bring in the other two eagles from Minas Tirith. That is within a range of four. So they'll have a total of five eagles there that we can use. All right. So the combat strength will be five for the free peoples. Shadow player has the Balrog, a spider, and a Nazgul. Their leadership is three for the Balrog, one for the Nazgul, total of four. They have a total of seven combat units. I'm sorry, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Combat strength of five. Shadow player rolled. He had six combat cards. He rolled a six, so they will not be playing a combat card. We're attacking a stronghold, so the attacker will only win on sixes. All right, we'll make the shadow player attack. He rolls no hits. All right. Free people's player will respond with their defense. And they have a total of one hit. All right, now the leader re-rolls will take place. Shadow player has a leadership of four. He's looking for sixes. He has no hits. Wow. All right, the free peoples have leadership of three. So they can re-roll three dice. And they have one additional hit. All right. Now the Eagles will kick in, and that says after removing casualties from the combat roll and the leader reroll. So we'll do that. Two shadow units will have to be destroyed. We'll take two regulars. Then it says for each of the Eagles, we're going to make a die roll. On a result of one, we eliminate an Eagle. On a result of six, we score a hit. All right, so they'll be rolling five dice. Sixes and ones will be what we're looking for. 
And they rolled two ones with no sixes, so two eagles are eliminated. Those are permanently eliminated. Okay, that is the end of the first round of combat. And I think the shadow player is going to remain, so he is going to downgrade his elite unit to a regular, and he will continue the assault. And we'll see if we're going to be playing any combat cards for either side. This time, the shadow player is going to play the combat card Fear of Their Masters. Play if a shadow minion is in the battle. We have a Nazgul and Balrog. Forfeit your entire leadership to add two to all dice in your combat roll. Each unmodified six on the Free People's Player's combat roll or leader reroll inflicts one additional hit on the shadow army. Okay. Free Peoples are again playing speeding on a gathering wind. So we'll start with the shadow player attack. He's looking, now he has no reroll, but he's adding two to the result. He needs modified sixes. And he has scored a total of three hits. Three hits. He has no rerolls though. He's forfeited that. Free Peoples player has a combat value of five. They have scored no hits. Amazing. They will get their re-roll now. They have a total of three for leadership. So they'll re-roll three dice. And they've scored one hit, and that happens to be a six. So that is going to do an additional hit on the shadow army. That'll give them two hits. The shadow will lose two regulars. And the free peoples will lose three. So we'll take out a regular and an elite to cover that cost. And now the eagles will kick in. They're going to make three dice rolls and looking for ones and sixes. Here's the roll. They've rolled one six. That's going to do an additional combat hit on the shadow. And that is going to end the battle. The shadow cannot re- initiate the attack they have no more elites so we'll place those forces back on the board the free people's player has one die remaining it's a character die and i think we're going to use that to move a companion i'll use that character die to move legolas he's in the fold right now so our choices would be to have him take command of an rohan army or to try to move him maybe through the Druid Forest into Osgiliath to try to get to Lossernach and see if he can maybe help to command those forces. I'll have to think about that. Well, in the event that an attack from Saruman would come in, I think we'll move Legolas two provinces to West Emnet and into the Fords of Isen, and we'll have him take command of the Rohan forces there. Shadow player is up next. He's rolled for military focus, and his focus is in Angmar or Ruin. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any dice that can activate those armies for attack, so I guess what we'll do is I'm going to use a muster die, and we're going to muster one regular in North Ruin and one Sauron regular in Angmar to help protect that place. So we'll place one Easterling in North Rune and we'll place a Orc regular in Angmar to defend that city. All right. Shadow player is up next. There are no dice left in the Free People's Force Pool, so he'll be playing three dice. He's got a card draw, a muster draw, draw and a muster a die, and an event die. None of the cards would be particularly useful. He has ruled Military Matters and the Umbar and Harad region. And I think he'll use the muster die, and he's going to recruit, and we'll recruit an elite in Umbar. So we'll place an elite in Umbar, and he has two dice left, an event die and a card draw die. And I think the last two dice will be spent. We're going to use the card draw die to draw a character card. And we'll use the event die to play an event. And they're going to play the card, The Ringwraiths Are Abroad. 
Move any or all of the Nazgul. Then you may either move two armies, each containing a Nazgul, or attack with one army containing a Nazgul. All right. Well, I think what they're going to do is they're going to move the two Nazgul that are in Minas Morgul into Pelagor to get them some leadership down there. And I think the Nazgul in Druidan Forest will move to Minas Tirith, and we'll add that to the first army. Now we can use an army that with the Nazgul to launch an attack, and that's what we're going to do. And I believe we're going to launch the attack into Lothernik. So We'll set that battle up. Well, the Free Peoples are in an interesting position. They're in Lothernik. There's no place for them to retreat to. They cannot retreat into Minas Tirith. That is not considered a free region. And they cannot retreat into Osgiliath. And they can't cross the mountains. So they're going to have to fight to the death. All right, the Shadow Player has a combat strength of five with two leadership. Free Peoples have a combat strength of three and there is no defensive benefit there in a town. So that'll be marked as none. We'll see if the Shadow Player is going to play a combat card. Shadow Player rolled and he will not play a combat card. We'll see if we're playing anything. And they'll play the combat card advantageous position. Play if the defending army is inside the borders of a free people's nation. Subtract one from all dice on the combat roll of the shadow player. An unmodified six is still considered a hit for him. So in essence, he needs to roll sixes. We'll begin with his attack. He's going to roll five combat dice. He needs sixes. He has one hit. All right. Free People's player will roll their defense. They have no hits. All right. We'll do our re-rolls now. For the leadership of the Nazgul, they have two re-rolls. And they produced an additional hit. All right. So... Two units are going to be destroyed from the Gondorians. They cannot retreat, so they're going to have to stick it out. And the Shadow Player will continue his assault, obviously. He'll be rolling five dice. He has one hit. That's enough to do it. Free Peoples will roll one die. They have a hit. So each side is going to lose a unit. And the Southrons are victorious. And I think the victorious Southrons are going to take their entire force, with the exception of maybe a couple regulars to leave behind in Pelagor. And then they're going to try to reinforce that army in, that is besieging Minas Tirith. And that is going to end the action round. So far, no victory points have been scored, and we'll continue with another round. We're ready with the re next round. Each side has reclaimed their dice. Free Peoples have drawn the cards Dane, Ironfoot's Guard, the Grey Company, and the Dark Door. Shadow Player has drawn his cards. He has a total of five standard cards and four faction cards. Fellowship phase is next, and the Fellowship are going to declare themselves in Minas Morgul. They have a Fellowship progress of two. One, two, and they enter Minas Morgul. That moves their progress to zero. They have two corruption, and Gollum is leading the Fellowship. One eye is placed in the hunt box. That's the most that the shadow player can put in. And uh, we'll make our rolls and see what cards and dice we have available to us. Free peoples have two muster die, a removal character die, 
Recruit Faction or Play a Faction card, Event, and two Character Dice. Shadow Player only has five Action Dice available. He's got a Muster Army, two Muster Army, Muster, and two Event Dice. He's rolled a total of five eyes, and there are six eyes in the Hunt Pool. One of them is the Balrog Die, which will be, would be removed. I'll have to check on that to see if the Chief of the Ring Wraiths qualifies for that removal. And yes, it will. Any form of the Witch King will remove the die at the end of the round. Now, Galadriel's die has a removal star on it, but Gandalf the White is not in play, so it will not have to be removed. These are the dice and cards that we have available to us. Now, the Fellowship has reached Minas Morgul, so in the next Fellowship phase, they can enter the Mordor Trek. So I think we'll focus on military matters until that time. And I think they're going to play a muster die and play Dane Ironfoot's Guard. Recruit one Dwarven unit, regular or elite, and one Dwarven leader in Ereobor. And they'll recruit a leader and a elite in Ereobor. Shadow Player is up next. He is focused on military matters, and once again, we're in Umbar and Harad. We're going to use a muster army die to move two armies. We're going to move the force that is in Lasarnak to reinforce the troops that are besieging Minas Tirith. And all of those forces are going to move into the first army. That will make the first army a total of four elites and three regulars, and two Nazgul, four, five Nazgul with two spiders. Wow. And for the second army move, I think we will move these forces from near Harad into West Harander. All right. Free peoples are going to use a character die, and they're going to play the card, the Grey Company. Play if Strider or Aragorn is with a free people's army which he is in Minas Tirith. Eliminate one regular unit to recruit one elite unit of the same nation in the army with Strider and Aragorn, and then draw two strategy event cards. Okay. So we've eliminated a Gondor regular, and we're adding a Gondor elite. The force in Minas Tirith now consists of three regulars, an elite, Aragorn, Boromir, and Merry. Now we're going to draw two strategy cards. And we draw the cards, Help Unlooked For, and Guards of the Citadel. All right. Shadow Player is up next, and he's concentrating on the hunt for the ring. He's going to use an event die, and he's going to play the faction event, Children of Ungolent. Play if the Fellowship is not in a region containing a free people settlement. Move all spiders up to two regions. Then you may discard one spider figure in the region with the Fellowship to inflict one point of hunt damage, following the rules for a successful hunt. If the Fellowship is hidden, the free people's player may choose to reveal it to prevent the damage. So we only have one spider in range, but we're going to move that two spaces into Minas Morgul and we will discard that spider and we're going to inflict one point of damage on the fellowship and that'll move their corruption up to three free people's players up next they're going to use an event die and we're going to play guards of the citadel recruit one gondor unit regular or elite and one gondor leader in minas tirith and even though we're under siege, evidently that is a legal play. So that's what we'll do. So we placed a leader and an elite in Minas Tirith. There are only three regulars remaining in the Gondor force pool. I should have had one correction, and that would have been the chief of the ring wraith should have moved when the fellowship declared themselves in Minas Morgul. Uh, he has that special ability, fire and shadow. And that allows him to, as long as the fellowship does not declare themselves in a free people settlement, he can move along. And that's what he's, he should have done. 
Shadow Player is up next. He's turned to military matters and he's focusing his attention on Mordor. I think we're going to launch the attack on Minas Tirith. He's going to play a muster army die to accomplish that. All right, we're ready for the Battle of Minas Tirith. We've got Aragorn, Boromir, and Mary, I believe it is. Yes, Mary. That'll give them a leadership value with the leader of the Gondorian leader. Gives them a total of five, maximum of five. They have a combat strength currently of one, two, three, four, five. Shadow Player has four elites, three regulars, two spiders, five Nazgul, giving them five leadership. Shadow Player is playing the combat card Hideous Speed. Play if there are spiders in the same region as the Shadow Army. Before the combat roll, roll one die. On a result of one or two, eliminate one of the spider figures. On a result of five or six, eliminate a free people's leader or a level one companion in the battle. All right, well, we'll start with that. That has an initiative value of three. Shadow uh, free peoples will be playing Brave Stand. Play if a companion is in the battle. Shadow player rolls one die less in his combat roll for each companion present to a min minimum of one. So they'll be rolling three less dice eventually. We'll start out with the hideous speed roll. All right, here's the spider attack. And they rolled a, it's a cock die, but we'll re-roll it. It's a one, so a spider is eliminated. All right, now we're gonna roll the attack. Shadow player is going to be rolling three less dice than normal, so he's only going to have a combat ability of two this round. Right, he needs sixes. He has no hits. All right. Free people's player has a combat strength of five, and they're going to hit on fives and sixes. And they have one hit. All right, now we'll take care of our leader rerolls. Shadow player can re-roll up to two dice, because that's all they put in. So here's their re-roll. No hits. Free peoples can re-roll all four of their misses. And they've rolled an additional hit. That's it, just two hits. They're going to take the casualties as the regulars. And the shadow player is going to continue the assault. They're going to downgrade an elite Southron to a regular. And they're going to continue the attack. For the next round of the siege, we're going to be playing no quarter. And the shadow player will be playing Mumakill. And we'll read the Mumakill card first. Now that has a initiative of three to five and the no quarter has an initiative of five so let's see what the momical card says play if a south Rons and easterlings elite unit is in the battle they are add one to all dice on your combat roll if after the leader reroll you scored more total hits than your opponent including hits from any free people's pre-combat attack from a combat card score one additional hit no quarter card is if your combat roll or leader reroll scores at least one hit, score an additional hit. All right, we'll begin with the shadow player attack. He has an attack strength of one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we're going to be adding one to all dice on our combat roll. Okay, here is the roll. And he's done one hit. That's it. Right. Three peoples will roll their defense. They've done no hits. All right, we're going to do, take care of our leader re-rolls now. Shadow is going to have a re-roll of four dice. And they ended up with one additional hit. All right. Free peoples will roll their reroll. They have five, so we'll see. Yeah, 
and they have two hits. All right. And the no quarter card says if your combat roll or leader reroll scores at least one hit, score an additional hit. So that'd be the equivalent of them having three hits. And the mumma kill card doesn't give us any other advantage. Um, more total hits than your opponent. Nope. All right. So the shadow player has to lose three points. They'll take out a elite and a regular that'll cover the damage. And the free peoples will lose two regulars. And we have to decide if the shadow player is going to stick around or not. I don't think they have enough strength. They've only got a combat strength of three. So I think we will cancel the attack. All right, the free peoples are going to use a mustard die and they're going to play the card Grimborn. Uh, the old son of Bjorn, and they'll use a mustard die to play that, and it says recruit one north unit, regular or elite, and a north leader in Carrick. So that's what we'll do. And I've chosen to place a leader and an elite in Carrick. Shadow player is up next, and he is centered on military matters in Mordor. And I think what we'll do, we're going to use a mustard die, and we're going to convert the chief of the ring wraiths to his alternate form. And he's going to become the Witch King, the Black Captain. We'll get out his alternate model. And we'll replace that model in Minas Morgul. Shadow Player is up next and he's going to use this Recruit Play Faction card die and we're going to recruit an Ent in Fanghorn. And that'll be our fourth Ent. Shadow player is up next. He's down to his last die, and it is a muster die. And he's going to recruit, I think, um, two military units, a regular in Minas Morgul and a regular in Dal Guldur. They have to rebuild their forces. I don't think they're going to have time for that, though. Shadow player has no more dice left, so the free peoples have two character dice. We're going to use one character die to activate the army in Dal Amroth and we'll move that into Lambden. So the leader is going to lead them into Lambden. And I don't know if I should leave Garrison behind or not. We've got those Corsairs of Umbar there. Well, I suppose we'll leave one behind just to be sure. And then the next character die they will spend, they're going to attack with the army with a leader and we're going to launch the attack into Pelagor and try to retake that victory point. All right, we've set up the counterattack in Pelagor. Free people's strength is five. They have one leadership, five combat strength. Southrons are defending, so they're defending in a city, so only sixes will count in the first round. And they're going to play the combat card, Deadly Strike. Both armies add two to all dice on their combat and leader rerolls. We'll start out with the free people's attack. Plus two. And they have a total of three hits. That's sufficient to take out the defenders. All right. Shadow player will roll his dice. He will add two. And he has only one hit. So one Gondor unit is removed. Both of the Southrons are removed, and Gondor has reclaimed Pelagar, and that's going to move the victory track down back down to zero. So Gondor had a successful counterattack, and they've retaken Pelagar, and that's going to end the round, and we'll continue a new round. All right, each side has reclaimed their dice. The Balrog die has been removed. Free People's Player have drawn Fear, Fire, Foes, House of the Stewards, and the Stone of Eric. You have to discard one of the faction cards, and I think they will discard the Stone of Eric card. And that will give the Free People's Player a total of three standard cards and four faction. Shadow Player has drawn his cards. He has a full complement. Six standard cards and four faction. It's now the Fellowship phase, and the Fellowship is going to enter the Mordor track. We place them on 
space zero. The extra tiles are going to be added into the hunt bag and we're going to have a minus one, a zero, the shelub tile and two eyes. All right. All right, the shadow player has placed one additional one die into the hunt box and he, when he rolled he added an additional one so there's two eyes in the hunt box these are the dice we have for the free peoples we have two character oh finally a will of the west three muster army and a play or draw faction card shadow player rolled an army die a muster army recruit or play faction card and five muster die so not good and I think to facilitate this playthrough a little further, what I'm going to do is play the game out since we're already on the Mordor track. And I'm just going to show the viewers the principal actions in the game. If there's a big battle or if the Fellowship starts moving along the Crack of Doom track, we'll show those. All right, in a previous part of the turn, the Free Peoples ended up bringing Gandalf the White into play, giving them an extra action die for the next turn. Now we're going to attempt to move the Fellowship on the Crack of Doom, and we'll draw a Hunt Tile. And that tile is revealed to be an eye with a reveal. There are two eyes in the Hunt Box, and that's going to move the corruption up to five and we have successfully advanced into the first location but we are going to be revealed. Gollum's ability only works with uh, standard numbered hunt tiles so we can't use that. We could use, yeah, and we can't, that's it. In the following turn the Free Peoples ended up using a character die to hide the fellowship. All right, the turn concluded with the Fellowship making some progress on the Crack of Doom. They're currently hidden, and they have a corruption of five. The Witch King, Black Captain, has taken a force and moved that into Osgiliath, and another force of four orcs reinforced the besieging area in Minas Tirith, and we've moved some Corsairs of Umbar into the West Horondor region. So I'm going to begin another round. All right, we've reclaimed our dice. The Free Peoples have their extra die for Gandalf the White. They've drawn the cards Celeborn's Galadrium, Athelius, and Saruman is a neighbor. And we're going to be over on our faction card, so we're going to have to discard one. And I think we're going to get rid of the In Long Swift Lines card. All right, the uh, Free Peoples player have a Will of the West, Muster Army, two character, Muster, card draw, event, and recruit or play faction die. Shadow player has two Muster, Muster Army, two Muster Army rather, and an Army die, and the rest are placed into the hunt box. Shadow player rolled four eyes during his action roll, so we have five eyes in the hunt box. We'll start out with the Free Peoples. They're going to play the card Athelus, and they'll use an event die to do that. Roll three dice and heal one corruption point for each result of five or better. If Strider is in the guide, if Strider is the guide, heal one corruption point for each result of three plus. All right, so we're going to be rolling three dice. And here's the roll. And he has no success. That's too bad. All right. All right, in previous events, the dwarves are now at war. The Easterlings have taken the Iron Hills. Now, the Fellowship is going to use character die, and we're going to move the Fellowship up the track, and we'll draw a token. And we draw a Smeagol tile, so that is going to be discarded. We have to draw another token. Okay, let's see what we get. And this time we have one damage. All right. And I think we'll take the one corruption. That'll move us up to six. And the Fellowship is now three steps away from the Crack of Doom. 
All right, the fellowship is going to attempt to move once again. I'm going to use a character die and we'll draw a hunt tile. And our hunt tile is three damage. All right, well, I think what we can do is we'll use Gollum's ability and it says if the fellowship is not revealed as an effect of the hunt, you may choose to reveal it to reduce the hunt damage by one to a minimum of zero. So we'll do that. That'll reduce the hunt damage to two and we'll reveal the fellowship. I'll put the hunt damage at eight and we have advanced now one more step and we're one, two spaces away from the crack of doom. The Witch King, the Black Captain, has moved a reinforcing force into Minas Tirith, and that is at full strength right now. Fellowship is going to use their Will of the West die as a character die, and we're going to hide the Fellowship. All right, the turn ended with the Fellowship on the three portion of the Crack of Doom track. They are hidden. Corruption is at eight. The other events that occurred is more Ents came into the game and the Shadow Player ended up reinforcing the Easterlings and the Southerlings. Each side recovered their dice. Free Peoples drew the Book of Marzable, Swift Boats, and Paths of the Dead. Shadow Player has a full complement of cards and he had to discard a random faction card. Shadow Player has placed one die in the hunt box. Free Peoples have three character dice, two muster, I'm sorry, three muster, a recruit faction, and an event die. And a terrible roll for the shadow player. No, <coughs> excuse me, no additional eyes were placed in the hunt box. They have three muster army, character, army, recruit, and uh, draw a faction card, and three event dice. Shadow player will begin the turn by using a character die and attempt to move the fellowship and we're going to draw a tile. And the tiles revealed to be the Shelob tile. We're going to roll a d6 and that's the amount of corruption that the fellowship is going to take. And here's the roll. And they're going to take three corruption. That'll move them up from eight up to eleven and they are one space short of the crack of doom shadow player is going to use a character die to play give it to us give it to us special hunt tile is now in play add the tile to the hunt pool when the fellowship is on the mordor track well they're on it so we're going to add that tile into the pool free peoples are up next and they're going to use an event die to play elven cloaks the Elven Cloak Special Hunt Tile is now in play. Add the tile to the Hunt Pool when the Fellowship is on the Mordor track. So we're going to place the Elven Cloaks token into the bag. And the Shadow Player is going to use one of their character die and attempt to advance the Fellowship to the Crack of Doom. We'll see what happens. And they draw the token. Zero damage, but revealed. All right, so the Fellowship advances to the Crack of Doom, and that is the game. So the Free Peoples were successful, and they've dunked the ring in the Cracks of Doom. I'm going to return with a few thoughts on the Shadowbot 3.3 and some changes that I'm thinking about. I noticed in the playthrough that Isengard is not well enough represented in the game. So what I'm going to propose is I'm going to make a modification to the Sauron's Gaze table and to the military table. What we're going to do is we're going to give Isengard its own slot on the Gaze table. What I'm guessing on is we'll give them 30% of the dice, which would give them a total of six spots of the D20. So one through six would be Isengard. And we'll probably reserve another six or so for the ring uh, matters and everything else will be into military matters. Isengard would be removed from the military table and he would just have the Sauron locations that he would act upon. I think that might be a good answer to getting Isengard more active in the game. 
Uh, I think that was one of the major flaws so far is the randomness did not allow Isengard to act properly. So I think I'm going to try making changes to that and we'll see how that goes in a future playthrough. So that's going to bring this series to a close. I hope you enjoyed watching this playthrough of War of the Ring with the Shadowbot. And uh, as I said earlier, I think we're going to have a Shadowbot 3.4. And I'm going to incorporate those changes in to that and I think that's going to make the game a lot more competitive for the Shadowbot. If we can get more independent action from Saruman, which was a major figure in the game, I think that's going to help to make this much more competitive. So, thanks for watching and I appreciate your views and likes and I look forward to seeing you again next time at the Solo Gamers Club for another video. Thanks for watching and have a nice evening.